Genghis Khan, born Temujin, circa 1162, August 25, 1227, was the founder and first great Khan emperor of the Mongol Empire, which became the largest contiguous empire in history after his death. He came to power by uniting many of the nomadic tribes of the Mongol steppe and being proclaimed the universal ruler of the Mongols, or Genghis Khan. With the tribes of Northeast Asia largely under his control, he set in motion the Mongol invasions, which ultimately witnessed the conquest of much of Eurasia and incursions by Mongol raiding parties as far west as Legnitsa in western Poland and as far south as Gaza, his exceptional military successes made Genghis Khan one of the most important conquerors of all time, and by the end of the Great Khan's life, the Mongol Empire occupied a substantial portion of Central Asia and China, Genghis Khan and his story of conquest have a fearsome reputation in local histories. Estimates of the number of people who died as a consequence of Genghis Khan's Military campaigns range from about 4 million in the most conservative estimates to up to 60 million in the most sweeping historical accounts. Genghis Khan was also portrayed beneficently by early Renaissance sources out of respect for the great spread of culture, technology, and ideas along the Silk Road under the Mongol Empire. Beyond his military successes, Genghis Khan's civil achievements included the establishment of Mongol law and the adoption of the Uyghur script as a writing system across his vast territories. He also practiced meritocracy and religious tolerance. Present-day Mongolians regard him as the founding father of Mongolia for unifying the nomadic tribes of Northeast Asia. Name and spelling, according to the secret history, Genghis Khan's birth name Temujin came from the Tatar chief Temujin Yuj whom his father had just captured. The name is an honorary title meaning universal ruler that represents an aggrandization of the pre-existing title of Khan. When Kublai Khan established the Yuan dynasty in 1271, he had his grandfather Genghis Khan placed in official records and accorded him the temple name Taizu and the posthumous name Emperor Xingwu. Lineage and Birth Temujin was born the first son of Holon, second wife of his father Yasujiai, who was the chief of the Borjigin clan in the nomadic Kamig Mongol confederation, nephew to Ambagai and Hachula Khan, and an ally of Togrul of the Kerei tribe. Temujin's noble background made it easier for him, later in life, to solicit help from and eventually consolidate the other Mongol tribes. There is considerable uncertainty surrounding both the date and location of Genghis Khan's birth, with historical accounts assigning dates of birth ranging from 1155 to 1182 and a wide variety of possible birth locations. The Arab historian Rashid Aldin asserted that Genghis Khan was born in 1155, while the history of Yuan records his year of birth as 1162 and Tibetan sources implausibly present 1182 as the correct date, modern historical studies have largely attested the 1162 date presented by the Chinese history as the most realistic. Given the significant problems associated with how either the 1155 or 1182 dates would reflect on other events in Genghis Khan's timeline, the 1162 date has meanwhile been attested by various sources including a 1992 study of the Mongol calendar commissioned by UNESCO that suggested the specific date of May 1, 1162, the location of Genghis Khan's birth largely shrouded in mystery, with a wide range of locations proposed, many in the vicinity of the mountain Burkhan Khaldun. Tribal upbringing, Temujin grew up with three brothers, Khazar, Hakian, and Temuj, one sister, Temulin, and two half-brothers, Better and Belgudii, as common to nomads in Mongolia, Temujin's early life was difficult, at age nine, his father arranged a marriage for him and delivered him to the family of his future wife Borte of the tribe Kongarad. Temujin was to live there serving the head of the household Daisetsun until the marriageable age of twelve, upon learning this, Temujin returned home to claim his father's position as chief but the tribe refused him and abandoned the family, leaving it without protection. Over time, Temujin's older half-brother Better began to exercise power as the eldest male in the family, creating tension in the family that boiled over during one hunting excursion by the men of the family and resulted in the death of Better at the hands of Temujin and his brother Khazar, wives and concubines. As was common for powerful Mongol men, Genghis Khan had many wives and concubines, these women were often queens or princesses that were taken captive from the territories he conquered or gifted to him by allies, vassals, or other tribal acquaintances. Genghis Khan's principal or most famous wives and concubines included Borte, Yusujin, Yesui, Kulan Katun, Mosh Katun, Jorbizu, and Ibaka Beki. Genghis Khan gave several of his high status wives their own ordos or camps to live in and manage. It was the job of the Keshig, Mongol Imperial Guard, to protect the yurts of Genghis Khan's wives, 
when Genghis Khan set out on his military conquests, he usually took one wife with him and left the rest of his wives and concubines to manage the empire in his absence. Uniting the Mongol confederations, 1184-1206, in the early 12th century, the Central Asian plateau north of China was divided into several prominent tribal confederations, including Naimans, Merkits, Tatars, Kamig Mongols, and Karaites, that were often unfriendly towards each other, as evidenced by random raids, revenge attacks, and plundering, early attempts at power. Temujin began his ascent to power by offering himself as an ally, or, according to other sources, a vassal, to his fathers. Anda, sworn brother or blood brother, Togrul. Who was Khan of the Karaites? The relationship began when Borte was kidnapped by Merkits in around 1184. He offered 20,000 of his Karait warriors to help win her back, rift with Jamukha in defeat, as Jamukha and Temujin drifted apart in their friendship, each began consolidating power and they became rivals, following his earlier defeat of the Merkits, and a proclamation by the shaman Kokochu that the eternal blue sky had set aside the world for Temujin, Temujin began rising to power. In 1186, Temujin was elected Khan of the Mongols, threatened by this rise, Jamukha attacked Temujin in 1187 with an army of 30,000 troops, however, Jamukha horrified and alienated potential followers by boiling 70 young male captives alive in cauldrons, Togrul, as Temujin's patron, was exiled to the Karakaitai, the life of Temujin for the next 10 years is unclear, as historical records are mostly silent on that period. Returned to power, around the year 1197, the Jin initiated an attack against their formal vassal, the Tatars, with help from the Karaites and Mongols, Temujin commanded part of this attack, and after victory, he and Togrul were restored by the Jin to positions of power, Jurchen inscription, 1196, in Mongolia relating to Genghis Khan's alliance with the Jin against the Tatars in his rule and his conquest of rival tribes, Temujin broke with Mongol tradition in a few crucial ways, he delegated authority based on merit and loyalty. Rather than family ties, as an incentive for absolute obedience and the Yasa Code of Law, Temujin promised civilians and soldiers wealth from future war spoils, he would even have his mother adopt orphans from the conquered tribe, bringing them into his family, these political innovations inspired great loyalty among the conquered people, making Temujin stronger with each victory, rift with Togrul, Sengum, son of Togrul, Wang Khan, envied Genghis Khan's growing power and affinity with his father. He allegedly planned to assassinate Genghis Khan, one of the later ruptures between Genghis Khan and Togrul was Togrul's refusal to give his daughter in marriage to Joki, Genghis Khan's first son, Togrul allied with Jamukha, who already opposed Genghis Khan's forces, however, the dispute between Togrul and Jamukha, plus the desertion of a number of their allies to Genghis Khan, led to Togrul's defeat. Jamukha escaped during the conflict, this defeat was a catalyst for the fall and eventual dissolution of the Kare tribe. In 1201, a Kuruldai elected Jamukat as Gurkhan, universal ruler, a title used by the rulers of the Karakaitai, Jamukha's assumption of this title was the final breach with Genghis Khan, and Jamukha formed a coalition of tribes to oppose him. After several battles, Jamukha was turned over to Genghis Khan by his own men in 1205. According to the secret history, Genghis Khan again offered his friendship to Jamukha. Sole ruler of the Mongol plains, the part of the Merkit clan that sided with the Naimans were defeated by Subutai, who was by then a member of Genghis Khan's personal guard and later became one of Genghis Khan's most successful commanders. The Naimans' defeat left Genghis Khan as the sole ruler of the Mongol steppe. All the prominent confederations fell or united under his Mongol confederation. Accounts of Genghis Khan's life are marked by claims of a series of betrayals and conspiracies. These include rifts with his early allies such as Jamukha, who also wanted to be a ruler of Mongol tribes, and Wang Khan, his and his father's ally, his son Joki, and problems with the most important shaman, who allegedly tried to drive a wedge between him and his loyal brother Kassar. His military strategies showed a deep interest in gathering intelligence and understanding the motivations of his rivals, exemplified by his extensive spy network and yam root systems, as a result. By 1206, Genghis Khan had managed to unite or subdue the Merkits, Naimans, Mongols, Karaites, Tatars, Uyghurs, and other disparate smaller tribes under his rule. It resulted in peace between previously warring tribes and a single political and military force. The union became known as the Mongols. At a Kuruldai, a council of Mongol chiefs, Genghis Khan was acknowledged as Khan of the Consolidated Tribes and took the new title Genghis Khan. The title Khagan was conferred posthumously by his son and successor Ojidi, who took the title for himself, as he was also to be posthumously declared the founder of the Yuan dynasty. 
Military campaigns, 1207 to 1227, Western Xia Dynasty, during the 1206 political rise of Genghis Khan, the Mongol Empire created by Genghis Khan and his allies shared its western borders with the of the Tangut Western Xia Dynasty, to the east and south of the Western Xia Dynasty was the militarily superior Jin Dynasty, founded by the Manchurian Jurchens, who ruled northern China as well as being the traditional overlords of the Mongolian tribes for centuries, though militarily inferior to the neighboring Jin. The Western Xia still exerted a significant influence upon the adjacent northern steppes. The next year, in 1206, Temujin was formally proclaimed Genghis Khan, ruler of all the Mongols, marking the official start of the Mongol Empire, and the same year Emperor Huanzong of the Western Xia was deposed by Lianxuan in a coup d'etat. Genghis then began preparing for a full-scale invasion, organizing his people, army and state to first prepare for war. By invading Western Xia, Temujin would gain a tribute-paying vassal and also would take control of caravan routes along the Silk Road and provide the Mongols with valuable revenue. Furthermore, from Western Xia he could launch raids into the even more wealthy Jin dynasty, he correctly believed that the more powerful young ruler of the Jin dynasty would not come to the aid of the Western Xia. When the Tanguts requested help from the Jin dynasty, they were refused. Despite initial difficulties in capturing Western Xia cities, Genghis Khan managed to force Emperor Renzong to submit to vassal status. Jin Dynasty, in 1211, after the conquest of Western Xia, Genghis Khan planned again to conquer the Jin Dynasty, luckily for the Mongols, Wanyan Zhou Jin, the field commander of the Jin army made several tactical mistakes, including avoiding attacking the Mongols at the first opportunity using his overwhelming numerical superiority, and instead initially fortifying behind the Great Wall. At the subsequent Battle of Yuhuling, which the Jin commander later committed to in the hope of using the mountainous terrain to his advantage against the Mongols. The general's emissary Mingan defected to the Mongol side and instead handed over intelligence on the movements of the Jin army, which was subsequently outmaneuvered, resulting in hundreds of thousands of Jin casualties, so many in fact that decades later, when the Taoist sage Zhou Chuji was passing through this pass to meet Genghis Khan, he was stunned to still see the bones of so many people scattered in the pass. In 1215, Genghis besieged the Jin capital of Zhengdu, modern-day Beijing. This forced the Jin ruler, Emperor Xuanzong, to move his capital south to Kaifeng, abandoning the northern half of his empire to the Mongols. Between 1232 and 1233, Kaifeng fell to the Mongols under the reign of Genghis's third son and successor, Ojidiai Khan. The Jin dynasty collapsed in 1234 after the siege of Kaizhou. Karakaitai, Kuklug, the deposed Khan of the Naiman Confederation that Temujin defeated and folded into his Mongol Empire, fled west and usurped the Khanate of Karakaitai, also known as the Western Liao, as it was originally established as remnants of the Liao dynasty. But Genghis Khan decided to conquer the Karakaitai and defeat Kuklug, possibly to take him out of power. By this time, the Mongol army was exhausted from ten years of continuous campaigning in China against the Western Xia and Jin dynasty, therefore, Genghis sent only two Tumun, 20,000 soldiers, against Kuklug, under his younger general, Jeeb, known as the Arrowed. As a result, Kuklug's army was defeated west of Kashgar, Kuklug fled again, but was soon hunted down by Jeeb's army and executed. Khwarazmian Empire In the early 13th century, the Khwarazmian dynasty was governed by Shah Allah ad Din Muhammad. Genghis Khan saw the potential advantage in Khwarazmia as a commercial trading partner using the Silk Road and he initially sent a 500-man caravan to establish official trade ties with the empire. Genghis Khan and his family and commanders invested in the caravan gold, silver, silk, various kinds of textiles and fabrics and pelts to trade with the Muslim traders in the Khwarazmian lands. Genghis Khan then sent a second group of three ambassadors, two Mongols and a Muslim, to meet the Shah himself, instead of the governor in Elchuk. Outraged, Genghis Khan planned one of his largest invasion campaigns by organizing together around 100,000 soldiers, ten Tumuns, his most capable generals and some of his sons, the Mongol army under Genghis Khan, generals and his sons crossed the Tin Shan Mountains by entering the area controlled by the Khwarazmian Empire, the Shah's army was. Split by diverse internecine feuds and by the Shah's decision to divide his army into small groups concentrated in various cities. The Mongol army quickly seized the town of Otrar, relying on superior strategy and tactics, Genghis Khan ordered the wholesale massacre of many of the civilians, enslaved the rest of the population and executed in Elchuk by pouring molten silver into his ears and eyes, as retribution for his actions. Next, Genghis Khan besieged the city of Bokhara. Bokhara was not heavily fortified, with just a moat and a single wall, 
and the citadel typical of Khwarazmian cities, the city leaders opened the gates to the Mongols, though a unit of Turkish defenders held the city's citadel for another 12 days, the survivors from the citadel were executed, artisans and craftsmen were sent back to Mongolia, young men who had not fought were drafted into the Mongolian army and the rest of the population was sent into slavery. After the surrender of Bukhara, Genghis Khan also took the unprecedented step of personally entering the city, after which he had the city's aristocrats and elites brought to the mosque, where, through interpreters, he lectured them on their misdeeds, saying, if you had not committed great sins, God would not have sent a punishment like me upon you, with the capture of Bukhara, the way was clear for the Mongols to advance on the capital of Samarkand, which possessed significantly better fortifications and a larger garrison compared to Bokhara. To overcome the city, the Mongols engaged in intensive psychological warfare, including the use of captured Khwarazmian prisoners as body shields, after several days only a few remaining soldiers, loyal supporters of the Shah, held out in the citadel, after the fortress fell, Genghis executed every soldier that had taken arms against him. According to the Persian historian Adam Alek Javani, the people of Samarkand were then ordered to evacuate and assemble in a plain outside the city, where they were killed and pyramids of severed heads raised as a symbol of victory. Similarly, Javani wrote that in the city Termez, to the south of Samarkand, all the people, both men and women, were driven out onto the plain and divided in accordance with their usual custom, then they were all slain. But Javani's account of mass killings at these sites is not corroborated by modern archaeology. Instead of killing local populations, the Mongols tended to enslave the conquered and either send them to Mongolia to act as menial labor or retain them for use in the war effort, the effect was still mass depopulation, the piling of a pyramid of severed heads happened not at Samarkand but at Nishapur, where Genghis Khan's son-in-law Dekuchar was killed by an arrow shot from the city walls after the residents revolted. She also supposedly ordered that every dog, cat and any other animals in the city by slaughtered so that no living thing would survive the murder of her husband but, according to widely circulated but unverified stories, the severed heads were then erected in separate piles for the men, women and children, near to the end of the battle for Samarkand, the Shah fled rather than surrender, Genghis Khan subsequently ordered two of his generals, Subutai and Jeeb, to destroy the remnants of the Khwarazmian Empire, giving them 20,000 men in two years to do this, meanwhile, the wealthy trading city of Urgench was still in the hands of Khwarazmian forces. The assault on Urgench proved to be the most difficult battle of the Mongol invasion and the city fell only after the defenders put up a stop defense, fighting block for block, as usual, the artisans were sent back to Mongolia, young women and children were given to the Mongol soldiers as slaves, and the rest of the population was massacred. Georgia, Crimea, Kievan Rus and Volga Bulgaria, after the defeat of the Khwarazmian Empire in 1220, Genghis Khan gathered his forces in Persia and Armenia to return to the Mongolian steppes, Genghis Khan led the main army on a raid through Afghanistan and northern India towards Mongolia, while another 20,000, two Tuman, contingent marched through the Caucasus and into Russia under generals Jeeb and Subutai, the Mongols defeated the Kingdom of Georgia, sacked the Genoese trade fortress of Kaffa in Crimea and overwintered near the Black Sea. Subutai sent emissaries to the Slavic princes calling for a separate peace, but the emissaries were executed. At the Battle of Kalka River in 1223, Subutai's forces defeated the larger Kievan force, they may have been defeated by the neighboring Volga Bulgars at the Battle of Samara Bend, there is no historical record except a short account by the Arab historian Ibn Alathur, writing in Mosul some 1,800 kilometers, 1,100 miles, away from the event, various historical secondary sources. Morgan Chambers, Crusade, state that the Mongols actually defeated the Bulgars, Chambers even going so far as to say that the Bulgars had made up stories to tell the recently crushed Russians that they had beaten the Mongols and driven them from their territory. The Russian princes then sued for peace, not only had the Rus put up strong resistance, but also Jeeb, with whom Subutai had campaigned for years, had been killed just prior to the Battle of Kalka River, as was customary in Mongol society for nobility, the Russian princes were given a bloodless death, six Russian princes, including Stislav III of Kiev, were put onto this platform and crushed to death. The Mongols learned from captives of the abundant green pastures beyond the Bulgar territory. Allowing for the planning for conquest of Hungary and Europe, he Genghis Khan recalled Subutai back to Mongolia soon afterwards. The famous cavalry expedition led by Subutai and Jeeb, in which they encircled the entire Caspian Sea, defeating all armies in their path, 
remains unparalleled to this day, and word of the Mongol triumphs began to trickle to other nations, particularly in Europe. In 1225 both divisions returned to Mongolia, later under Genghis Khan's grandson Batu and the Golden Horde. The Mongols returned to conquer Volga Bulgaria and Kievan Rus in 1237, concluding the campaign in 1240. Western Xia and Jin Dynasty, the vassal emperor of the Tanguts, Western Xia had earlier refused to take part in the Mongol war against the Khwarezmid Empire, Western Xia and the defeated Jin Dynasty formed a coalition to resist the Mongols, counting on the campaign against the Khwarezmians to preclude the Mongols from responding effectively, in 1226, immediately after returning from the west, Genghis Khan began a retaliatory attack on the Tanguts, one of the Tangut generals challenged the Mongols to a battle near Helan Mountains but was defeated. In November, Genghis laid siege to the Tangut city Lingzhou and crossed the Yellow River, defeating the Tangut Relief Army. According to legend, it was here that Genghis Khan reportedly saw a line of five stars arranged in the sky and interpreted it as an omen of his victory. In 1227, Genghis Khan's army attacked and destroyed the Tangut capital of Ninghia and continued to advance, seizing Lintiafu, Xining Province, Xindufu, and Deshun Province in quick succession in the spring. Ma Jianlong later died from wounds received from arrows in battle, the new Tangut emperor quickly surrendered to the Mongols, and the rest of the Tanguts officially surrendered soon after, not happy with their betrayal and resistance, Genghis Khan ordered the entire imperial family to be executed, effectively ending the Tangut royal lineage. Death in succession, Genghis Khan died within eight days of setting off for his final campaign against the Western Xia on August 18, 1227, according to the official history of Yuan commissioned during China's Ming Dynasty. The date of his death is therefore said to have fallen on August 25, 1227, during the fall of Yinchuan, the exact cause of his death remains a mystery, and is variously attributed to illness, being killed in action or from wounds sustained in hunting or battle, according to The Secret History of the Mongols Genghis Khan fell from his horse while hunting and died because of the injury, the Galician Uvalhinian Chronicle alleges he was killed by the Western Xia in battle, while Marco Polo wrote that he died after the infection of an arrow wound he received during his final campaign, later Mongol chronicles connect Genghis's death with a Western Xia princess taken as war booty. All of these legends were invented well after Genghis Khan's death, however, in contrast, a 2021 study found that the great leader likely died from bubonic plague. After investigating reports of the clinical signs exhibited by both the Khan and his army, which in turn matched the symptoms associated with the strain of plague present in Western Xia at that time. The Genghis Khan mausoleum, constructed many years after his death, is his memorial, but not his burial site. Before Genghis Khan died, he assigned Ojidi Khan as his successor. Genghis Khan left behind an army of more than 129,000 men, 28,000 were given to his various brothers and his sons, Taliui his youngest son, inherited more than 100,000 men. This force contained the bulk of the elite Mongolian cavalry, Joki, Shagatai, Ojidi Khan, and Kulan Sunja Legion received armies of four. Zero, zero, zero men each, the title of Great Khan passed to Ojidi, the third son of Genghis Khan, making him the second Great Khan, Kagan, of the Mongol Empire, Genghis Khan's eldest son, Joki, died in 1226, during his father's lifetime, Shagatai, Genghis Khan's second son was meanwhile passed over, according to the secret history of the Mongols, over a row just before the invasion of the Khwarezman Empire in which Shagatai declared before his father and brothers that he would never accept Joki as Genghis Khan's successor due to questions about his elder brother's parentage. In response to this tension and possibly for other reasons, Ojidi was appointed a successor. Later, his grandson split his empire into khanates. His descendants extended the Mongol Empire across most of Eurasia by conquering or creating vassal states in all of modern-day China, Korea, the Caucasus, Central Asia, and substantial portions of Eastern Europe and Southwest Asia. Organizational philosophy, politics, and economics. The Mongol Empire was governed by a civilian and military code called the Yasa. Created by Genghis Khan, the Mongol Empire did not emphasize the importance of ethnicity and race in the administrative realm, instead adopting an approach grounded in meritocracy. The Mongol Empire was one of the most ethnically and culturally diverse empires in history. As befitted its size, many of the empire's nomadic inhabitants considered themselves Mongols in military and civilian life including the Mongol people, Turkic peoples, and others, 
There were Khans of various non-Mongolian ethnicities such as Muhammad Khan, there were tax exemptions for religious figures and, to some extent, teachers and doctors. The Mongol Empire practiced religious tolerance because Mongol tradition had long held that religion was a personal concept and not subject to law or interference. Genghis Khan was a Tengrist, but was religiously tolerant and interested in learning philosophical and moral lessons from other religions. Various Mongol tribes were shamanist, Buddhist or Christian, religious tolerance was thus a well-established concept on the Asian steppe, modern Mongolian historians say that towards the end of his life, Genghis Khan attempted to create a civil state under the great Yasa that would have established the legal equality of all individuals, including women. However, there is no evidence of this or of the lifting of discriminatory policies towards sedentary peoples such as the Chinese. Women played a relatively important role in the Mongol Empire and in the family. For example, Torajin Khatun was briefly in charge of the Mongol Empire while the next male leader Khagan was being chosen. Modern scholars refer to the alleged policy of encouraging trade and communication as the Pax Mangalika, Mongol peace. Genghis Khan realized that he needed people who could govern cities and states conquered by him. He also realized that such administrators could not be found among his Mongol people because they were nomads and thus had no experience governing cities. For this purpose Genghis Khan invited a Khitan prince, Chutsai, who worked for the Jin and had been captured by the Mongol army after the Jin dynasty was defeated, Jin had risen to power by displacing the Khitan people, Genghis told Chutsai, who was a lineal descendant of Khitan rulers, that he had avenged Chutsai's forefathers. This reply impressed Genghis Khan, Chutsai administered parts of the Mongol Empire and became a confidant of the successive Mongol Khans. Military, Genghis Khan put absolute trust in his generals, such as Mukali, Jeeb and Subutai, and regarded them as close advisors, often extending them the same privileges and trust normally reserved for close family members, he allowed them to make decisions on their own when they embarked on campaigns far from the Mongol Empire capital Karakoram. While granting his generals a great deal of autonomy in making command decisions, Genghis Khan also expected unwavering loyalty from them. The Mongol military was also successful in siege warfare, cutting off resources for cities and towns by diverting certain rivers, taking enemy prisoners and driving them in front of the army, and adopting new ideas, techniques, and tools from the people they conquered, particularly in employing Muslim and Chinese siege engines and engineers to aid the Mongol cavalry in capturing cities. Another important aspect of the military organization of Genghis Khan was the communications and supply. Root or Yam Adapted from previous Chinese models, Genghis Khan dedicated special attention to this in order to speed up the gathering of military intelligence and official communications, to this end, Yam way stations were established all over the empire. Impressions, positive, Genghis Khan is credited with bringing the Silk Road under one cohesive political environment, this allowed increased communication and trade between the West, Middle East and Asia, thus expanding the horizons of all three cultural areas. Some historians have noted that Genghis Khan instituted certain levels of meritocracy in his rule, was tolerant of religions and explained his policies clearly to all his soldiers. Genghis Khan had a notably positive reputation among some Western European authors in the Middle Ages who knew little concrete information about his empire in Asia, as the principal unifying figure in Mongolian history, he remains a larger-than-life figure in Mongolian culture, he is credited with introducing the Mongolian script and creating the first written Mongolian code of law, in the form of the Yasek Genghis Khan became a symbol of national identity for many younger Mongolians, who maintain that the historical records written by non-Mongolians are unfairly biased against Genghis Khan, and that his butchery is exaggerated while his positive role is underrated. Mixed, there are conflicting views of Genghis Khan in China, which suffered a drastic decline in population. The population of North China decreased from 50 million in the 1195 census to 8.5 million in the Mongol census of 1235 to 36. However, many were victims of plague. In Hebei province alone, nine out of 10 were killed by the Black Death when Togon Timur was enthroned in 1333. The Black Death also contributed. However, according to Richard von Glan, a historian of Chinese economics, China's population only fell by 15% to a third from 1340 to 1370 and there is a conspicuous lack of evidence for pandemic disease on the scale of the Black Death in China at this time. Ethnic Han and Khitan soldiers defected en masse to Genghis Khan against the Jurchen-led Jin dynasty. Equally, while Genghis never conquered all of China, his grandson Kublai Khan, by completing that conquest and establishing the Yuan dynasty, 
is often credited with reuniting China, and there is a great deal of Chinese artwork and literature praising Genghis as a military leader and political genius. Mixed, there are conflicting views of Genghis Khan in China, which suffered a drastic decline in population. The population of North China decreased from 50 million in the 1195 census to 8.5 million in the Mongol census of 1235 to 36. However, many were victims of plague. In Hebei province alone, nine out of ten were killed by the Black Death when Togon Timur was enthroned in 1333. The Black Death also contributed, however, according to Richard von Glan, a historian of Chinese economics. China's population only fell by 15% to a third from 1340 to 1370 and there is a conspicuous lack of evidence for pandemic disease on the scale of the Black Death in China at this time. Ethnic Han and Khitan soldiers defected en masse to Genghis Khan against the Jurchen-led Jin dynasty. Equally, while Genghis never conquered all of China, his grandson Kublai Khan, by completing that conquest and establishing the Yuan dynasty, is often credited with reuniting China, and there is a great deal of Chinese artwork and literature praising Genghis as a military leader and political genius. Depictions, medieval, unlike most emperors, Genghis Khan never allowed his image to be portrayed in paintings or sculptures, the earliest known images of Genghis Khan were produced half a century after his death, including the famous National Palace Museum portrait in Taiwan, other portrayals of Genghis Khan from other cultures likewise characterized him according to their particular image of him. In Persia he was portrayed as a Turkic sultan and in Europe he was pictured as an ugly barbarian. With a fierce face and cruel eyes. The only individuals to have recorded Genghis Khan's physical appearance during his lifetime were the Persian chronicler Minhaj al Siraj Juzjani and Chinese diplomat Zhao Hong. Other descriptions of Genghis Khan come from 14th century texts. The Persian historian Rashid Eldin and Jamie El Tawarik, written in the beginning of the 14th century, stated that most Borjigin ancestors of Genghis Khan were tall, long bearded, red haired, and bluish green eyed, features which Genghis Khan himself had. In the Georgian Chronicles, in a passage written in the 14th century, Genghis Khan is similarly described as a large, good-looking man, with red hair, however, according to John Andrew Boyle, Rashid Eldin's text of red hair referred to ruddy skin complexion, and that Genghis Khan was of ruddy complexion like most of his children except for Kublai Khan who was swarthy. 14th century Arabic historian Shihab Alamari also disputed Rashid Eldin's translation and claimed Alan Wa falsified the origin of her clan. Some historians such as Denise Agel claimed that Rashid Eldin mythicized the origin of Genghis Khan ancestors, the Borjigin clan, through his own interpretations of the secret history of the Mongols. Depictions, medieval, unlike most emperors, Genghis Khan never allowed his image to be portrayed in paintings or sculptures, the earliest known images of Genghis Khan were produced half a century after his death, including the famous National Palace Museum portrait in Taiwan, other portrayals of Genghis Khan from other cultures likewise characterized him according to their particular image of him. In Persia he was portrayed as a Turkic sultan and in Europe he was pictured as an ugly barbarian. With a fierce face and cruel eyes. The only individuals to have recorded Genghis Khan's physical appearance during his lifetime were the Persian chronicler Minhaj al Siraj Juzjani and Chinese diplomat Zhao Hong. Other descriptions of Genghis Khan come from 14th century texts. The Persian historian Rashid Eldin and Jamie El Tawarik, written in the beginning of the 14th century, stated that most Borjigin ancestors of Genghis Khan were tall, long bearded, red haired, and bluish green eyed, features which Genghis Khan himself had. In the Georgian Chronicles, in a passage written in the 14th century, Genghis Khan is similarly described as a large, good-looking man, with red hair, however, according to John Andrew Boyle, Rashid Eldin's text of red hair referred to ruddy skin complexion, and that Genghis Khan was of ruddy complexion like most of his children except for Kublai Khan who was swarthy. 14th century Arabic historian Shihab Alamari also disputed Rashid Eldin's translation and claimed Alan Wa falsified the origin of her clan. Some historians such as Denise Agel claimed that Rashid Eldin mythicized the origin of Genghis Khan ancestors, the Borjigin clan, through his own interpretations of the secret history of the Mongols.